Patricia and Veronica are twin flames known as the Sight Chicks. They are light language practitioners, healers, spiritual advisors, intuitive mediums, Reiki master trainers, ordained ministers, master frequency crystal healer, certified angel readers, and certified aura chakra readers. Patricia is a homeopath, nutritionist, and is continuing the generation's work of spiritual enlightenment. She received her celestial messages from the extra, uh, uh, terrestrial Gal galactic council to guide humankind on the right path. They both had experienced near-death experiences. Both of them died and came back. And um, they uh, work with past, they do past lives and they do a lot of clearings as well. Um, let me just make sure I got this all because it got cut off. Um, when they do clearings, they work with manifestations, uh, removing negative energies and obstacles from a person, place, or thing. They also offer psychic readings, holistic services, and remote re uh, re Reiki and manifestation readings. And they both are Spanish, so they speak Spanish. So if there's anybody here that Spanish is their first language, um, you'll probably be able to speak with them because we're going to be able to open up the floor and have some um, opportunity like you just did with Roy to, um, for them to do some channeled messages. Um, they are, once again, they are medical intuitives and they both receive messages. They don't need cards also. So ladies, are you guys ready? Yes. Yes. Oh, there you are. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for everything, Sherry. Yes. You're amazing. Yes. We appreciate being here. All right. You're welcome. You got the floor for a half hour. All right. Great. So well, we brought another light worker. This is, uh, Oris. Come in. Closer. She's also. Come here closer. Where is it? Just, just we've, transported. We've, back. we've lost her in the trees. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> There's her hand. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a friend of ours, and she's going to ask some questions. Uh, That's been asked of us through the years. Um, a, a favorite of our, most of our clients is regarding mm -hmm. the uh, the coronavirus and how 2020 is going to end, and what about the vaccines and so on and so forth. So we just picked a few. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, and at, to, oh sorry. Go ahead. And at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the mic, obviously, for other questions. If anybody has any other questions? Yeah, I would like I would like for you guys to open it up later and do some um, readings with people like Roy did. To, okay. Hmm? Sure. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Great. Yeah. All right. People, go for it. So, where is humanity going from this moment on? I see the Earth's magnetic field amplifying. It's going to be opening a lot more. I see 2020 is going to be uh, a double-edged sword growth for many that have been struggling. Uh, the karmic pendulum is going to be swinging. Um, I see the color green. So it's growth for those that have been struggling. A lot of light workers that are struggling with either depression or depression that comes from lack of prosperity they are going to either bump into it or they're going to have a lot of communications messages through dreams, um, a lot of extraterrestrial assistance, and a lot more uh, ascension as well. Basically, humanity has also hit critical mass. Uh, we've been going for thousands and thousands of years uh, and slowly growing, but also we go so far and we hit a pinnacle and boom, they knock us right back down again. We go, we go up again because there's been many, many uh, civilizations before us that have gone and brought themselves up so high, but at some point they destroy themselves or um, they have extra terrestrial intervention, which pushes them back. And I believe they are trying to find the proper civilization that will go forward in love rather than distrust and hate and destruction uh, because that seems to be what has perceived in the past and we currently have a lot of solar flares that are coming in which is forcing us and and the the people here and and the entities here to to move forward and force them to start ascending and it's 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 quite a struggle, and through 2021, it's it's going to be a step by step process. So, with that said, what do you think the end of 2020 will bring us? Um, I think the end of 2020 is going to bring us a lot of changes, a lot of things that people are not even awake to hear, and a lot of people 
are just dying to hear um, because we're like splitting into groups. Um, it's, it's like you have the different consciousness of people and where they are because there's still humans and people that are uh, asleep and they are still in the negative they're in, um, you know, um, violence, negativity, um, disbelief, and they don't want to open up to the possibilities of love and a lot of paranoia. And then you have another group of um, people here on earth who are star seeds, light workers, and some of them are just starting to wake up. Some of them have woke up, you know, years and years and decades ago, and they're still struggling to move forward quicker and quicker and quicker. And I think there's going to be like a split now where some are going up and some are staying down. But the end of 2020 is going to be a large culmination of your, it, you can already see there's been um, things with the earth changing. Um, you know, we've had anything from locusts to earthquakes to, you know, flooding. And this is Mother Earth saying enough's enough. Yeah. And another thing that I also uh, am being shown is about six or seven countries that will have major volcanic eruptions. Uh, the earth is splitting. The, the lands are shifting. Uh, old lands will come up top. Uh, one of the legends and lore of Atlantis, part of it will start to edge up, only just the edge of it. And this is down by the Bimini Straits, um, as well as uh, large whirlpools are going to start to appear, water draining. And I see a lot more death in regards to anything having to do with water, uh, shipwrecks, um, even uh, military vehicles. And mm -hmm. I have a, I have a uh, message coming in that it is gonna be due to extraterrestrial interference. And these are the either the subs or the carriers that are transporting nuclear, either nuclear waste or nuclear arms to, to their counterparts. I also see uh, more and more things coming to light, more technology coming in, more, uh, more things like, uh, like she said, with extraterrestrials. We're going to start seeing more and more extraterrestrials out in the skies. Uh, but there's also shifts of who's who, because uh, we also, I believe, have the technology. It's just the population has been been blinded and not shown some of the technology that we we currently have so it's gonna you're gonna see all sorts of crazy stuff with the stars uh, i believe there's uh, other planets up there that um, we were not being shown because of all the the chemtrails that have been going through um, but recently um, i see the chemtrails clearing up so there's been a shift there's been a shift in in humanity's nature of more love, more compassion, and people are starting to fight back against against uh, you know the evils that are, are around right now. Yes. And I see a major, major change in our economy, major, major change in money, major, you're gonna see major changes going one after another after another. And it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna have something really negative and horrible happening here, and then something really great and positive happening here. And it's gonna be, it's like a battle, who's gonna win? Wow. wow. So, you know, get back a little bit. Could you explain a little bit more about the virus and the hidden enemy and what the hidden enemy is, such as like vaccines and things of that nature? Well, in regards to the hidden enemy, um, what the messages that I'm receiving from my intergalactic council is everything having to do with man-made poisons. Um, uh, the foods, the chemicals that are being put in, not just in the vaccines, which has been coming a more popular trend in social media for the most part, but it's everything that, that is not uh, concerning healthy, healthy uh, prospects and foods. The way that they're feeding the earth, the way that they're growing the plants, the way that they're growing fruits um, from genetically modified milk created in a lab also to genetically modified meats and actually manufactured meats through 3D printing. That's another thing too. Uh, basically it's, it's uh, equivalency or it's equal to eating a cardboard, but it's flavored pretty much. Um, I see that, that um, 
the older generation, the ones who didn't have so much stress, didn't deal with too much uh, technology, ate by the old remedies uh, through sickness, uh, pregnancy, uh, kept away from the busy cities. Those are the ones that are going to live a longer age uh, that, that don't concern themselves too much with today's stressors. Uh, the younger generations, even in mine, I was born in 75. So uh, along with uh, counterparts, contemporaries of mine and the younger generations, we're having to deal with all this stuff that they're putting, they're, they're pumping into the air um, not even so just the GMOs and the chemical trails, but also they spray anything from lithium to arsenic. Um, not just that, but they're basically trying to poison all the good stuff to, to what they're showing me is replacement of all that's healthy to cut back on the life, um, mutate genes pretty much. I think the virus is going to calm down. Um, as time goes on, I think, um, that uh, you know, it's it's been a little overblown, is what they're telling me, and that it's it's it yes, it's serious. Yes, it can kill people, but it's it's more about um, you know trying to you know um, hold people down, lower their frequencies, um, because we have solar flares coming in, and they are. Um, they are actually opening people up and trying to help people ascend. And that's their way of holding them down. The, 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 um, the invisible enemy is, is the negative um, work that certain entities are doing in this world. And they don't want people to ascend. They don't want people to grow. They don't want that. So it's, it's actually like a war an actual war going down. And also I believe that the, um, the virus is also a mask. They're saying it's a mask for hiding other things that are going on beneath the surface. And I think some of it's literally beneath the surface. Um, uh, that there, There's a lot of things going on that yes. we don't know that I feel are going to come to the surface very soon. Um, and not only that, um a lot of what is being uh, locked down, uh, basically churches, it's well known that when you reach a point of meditation of prayer, you do project these energy waves. So imagine you're praying by yourself, you get together in a group of five or 10 people, it amplifies greatly. Uh, the best way to counteract a lot of the negative surges coming in, um, not just from what the government's doing, what a lot of people believe is basically plastering and pushing down uh, negative uh, beliefs, that energy also can be purged out by projecting, projecting all the positive. State of grace. State of grace has been used for millennia, pretty much. It's basically the, the accountability of each person to be consciously thankful of what they have. Um, also helping other people guide them and uh, basically being nicer is a good way of doing mm -hmm. it. But not just that, being conscious that everybody's fighting a battle. It's about compassion. And the more you reach each, each level, pretty much, you're going to start to ascend even more. I also feel that, uh, I mean, that one person that is in a situation of love can actually affect 2,000 people around them and, uh, and raise their frequency. Yes. And as we raise our frequency, you know, uh, they've actually done the, um, the world uh, meditations and prayers where it has literally raised the Schumann frequency of the earth, you know, multiplied by, you know, tens of times. And the evil part of what's going on feeds on fear and negativity. So our biggest way to help is to raise our frequency up. That's great. So does this mean, are we at war? Yes, it's basically a spiritual war at this point. Um, it's, it's, it's the typical good versus evil. It is not the first time it's happened on mm -hmm. the surface. It's, not it's the been last. happening since the beginning of mm -hmm. our recorded time. And even before that, they found mm -hmm. uh, monolithic uh, paintings drawn by supposedly cavemen, pretty much. Uh, very, very detailed 
um, along with uh, the Mayans and the Aztecs and the Olmecs and the Incans as well. Uh, they find, and they keep on finding different things underneath the pyramids of Giza, along with the other lesser known pyramids mm -hmm. that they don't like to talk about. Yeah, a lot of these things are being hidden from the public um, all over the world. They don't want us to know how to um, raise our frequency and get our pineal gland spinning and, you know, through uh, fluoride, fluoride in the water, it calcifies the pineal gland, which is basically what they call the third eye. And that's where you get a lot of your information. Um, the other thing is, is, you know, we're trying to raise up as the other side is trying to hold us down. So it is literally a spiritual war between good and evil. And the best thing, you know, that I can say that can help us love. is, is love. And love, 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 you know, that's one of the things you see all over the streets. They're trying to, they have riots. They try to separate us. They don't let us congregate at church. They don't want us in big groups. It's kind of like the old adage divide and conquer and literally they're doing trying to do it on a world scale um but you know and a lot of it goes back to um the anunnaki who were the um some of the original um extraterrestrials that had come down to this earth through um different wars on different planets and they had come down and settled here and a lot of them were here to mine gold so uh what they're telling me is that uh beings were altered here to fit what they needed to um, basically they enslaved some people to be able to get gold out of our earth and take it back. Um, but then they ended up pretty much setting up shop here and uh, some of them were not so good. And there is uh, a whole uh, species of uh, intergalactic um, people that are actually living underground below us. There are many, many tunnels, many, many, um, even bases. Um, if uh, in Peru, there's actually uh, volcanic tunnels that go all the way from Peru down to um, the a Antarctica, yes. I believe it is, and all over the world. So, you know, we have a whole nother civilization living underneath us and we don't even know it. And that doesn't even include the inner earth, which is a whole nother story. But, uh, wow. Yeah. So, what can we do to become more ascended? Um, again, uh, one of the things that I believe that we need to do to become more ascended is to bring more love into our lives, try to take out fear, let go of past memories, let go of the past, work with the present, because, you know, most people have, you know, something in their past that has held them back. We stuff them down and they cause what they call uh, disease, but it's actually dis-ease. Um, because these memories fester and they create disease in our bodies to say, hey, hey, there's something wrong here. And, and there's different ways that you can do alternatively to where you can release these memories, release these problems through, um, you know, through holistic methods, whether it be uh, through chakra readings, whether it be through NLP, which is neuro linguistic programming. Um, there's quite a few different ways. Um, we also handle those ways of, uh, of letting go of that so you can help move forward and ascend because these things all hold you down. It's like a lead weight holding you down to the ground. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, other things that you can use, be in, in constant communication with your beings. Uh, basically, my, my favorite motto this year is plug in back to the universe. Mm -hmm. Once you find yourself plugged in, um, you'll start to reach those frequencies that are so badly needed. And you'll start to connect with other people that are also plugging in. And these aren't just older generation. These are children that are also star seeds that also come what I call with a pre-programming package on a cellular level. Um, kids that know, that see, that hear, they smell, they're omniscient. So that, that would be a good way. And also, uh, if you can afford a little singing bowl as well. Let me see if I can get this playing. I was actually using this a little bit earlier and some neck uh, stiffness that I had and I was able to crack my neck. Well, it cracked all by itself, but I felt so really good, better. So that's always a good thing. Do your meditation in the morning. Everything starts in the morning where you, you pre-program your day. You program how you're going to have uh, your day go. It's the frequency, mm. the vibration 
of how everything's going to lead up to the end of the day. They say there's going to be a lot of technology released, and a lot of that will be te uh, Tesla's technology of uh, new energy. Um, what we have here now is going to be totally different. Totally different. I say a to totally different energy grid. Uh, they say that there's going to be healing through the energy. Of course, a lot of us are already working with that, the frequencies that um, oh, one of the things also that Tesla has, has discovered that they don't like to let out is that, uh, that disease cannot live in an alkaline body. So work on your diet. Uh, clean your diet up because there's so many chemicals out there. Don't eat anything out of the box. Eat the outside of the grocery store, um, the fruits, the vegetables, and try to buy organic. Um, I feel that that'll also help people raise their frequencies. Try to stay away from fluoridated water. Eat more from the earth. Yes. Just be natural. Thank you. That's wonderful. <laughs> so how does the dividing of dimensions fit in this? Back in the picture. <laughs> I'll just jump back in. I went out for a picture. Um, how does the dividing of dimensions fit in all this? Oh, okay. So what, they're tell what they tell me is that there are literally hundreds and thousands of different dimensions out there. And they're all like a fan of a book. And, um, and every single time we make a choice or we make a decision in our life, it slides us into a different dimension. And then we follow a different path and then another different dimension. And then we follow another path and we can go forward and we can go back. And we are literally ascending back and forth through dimensions. And that is how people will drop in and out of your life. Also, um, I believe that that explains um, how the Mandela effect comes into play. Um, because I feel that people that are, um, are more ascended, more awake, um, as they go in and out of these dimensions, as they make choices and are working their way up, they're still remembering stuff from the past dimensions, but it's possible that in this dimension, that never existed. Um, look up Mandela effect. It's, it's, it's a really interesting uh, thing um, that is very profound. And I'm sure a lot of you light workers out there have experienced that. We're like, when, when I was a kid, I learned this and, and well, this didn't happen. And, and I believe that's why, because I think the light workers and the people, what we're trying to do is we're trying to help people ascend. And that's why we've been sent here. Um, both uh, Veronica and I have been abducted numerous times yes. from extraterrestrials um, ever since we were little. Friggin' flyers. Uh, we both died when we were, uh, I died when I was uh, seven. She died when she was eight. So we went there and back. Um, they keep on sending us back here, uh, but I feel that the, a lot of the light workers are in the same boat. Most light workers have had such a tough childhood, such a rough life, but I believe the reason for that is, is that if you didn't live through all those traumatic incidents, that you wouldn't be able to help people now that are going through it and they say, well, I went through this, then you understand you understand what they went through. And you wouldn't if you hadn't have gone through it. So I believe it was, it was meant to be as hard as it was, but we survived it. We lived through it. Um, and I believe that um, a lot of people have, have been abducted from extraterrestrials and taken into ships. I believe they're manipulating our DNA, especially the light workers, and they're trying to wake us up. They're reactivating things. So you're putting implants, they're following us around. Um, and I know, you know, some people think that's a little crazy, but you know, you're going to find out and it's going to, they're telling me that, you know, you're going to find more and more and more of, uh, films that are going to come out showing, uh, alien life, um, things from NASA, things from, you know, all the things that they've been hiding from us. Um, you know, when I was in my twenties and I was being abducted, there was really no one to talk to, but I did see one of the. Um, one of the astronauts when I was in my 20s at a conference and he said yes there is this is happening you know and I felt a little better but you don't tell your you don't tell anybody <laughs> <laughs> but it's a little more open now and I think it's like 81 percent of people actually yes. believe in yeah. aliens now so and there's a whole bunch of things to learn from that again another discussion oh my goodness so how does your choices affect this frequency Oh, again, um, the choices is pretty much, again, um, as we make choices in life, especially major choices, 
um, let's say um, I'm going to take a new job and I don't know if I should take this one or if I should take this one. And most of the time we know, but we don't always trust ourselves. And that is another thing with light workers. Please trust yourselves. Please trust your inner heart because your real brain is here, not here. And it's usually the first thing that comes into your mind, not after you think about it and your conscious mind goes, oh, but if I take this job, this is going to happen, this is going to happen to you, and you, you make it, you know, so horrible that you're not going to go because it's taking a risk. You know, jump off the cliff. If it feels right and that was your first thought, do it. Um, and then that might ascend you into a different dimension in a better plane, a better world. Um, if, if you decide to do the same old things and you're going to find you're going to re repeat a lot of patterns. One of the things uh, that happens a lot with everybody when you think about it is you make a decision. Um, perfect relationships are perfect um, example. Okay, so I dated someone who was narcissistic, took advantage of me, um, abused me, and um, and the whole nine yards because I didn't have enough confidence, my, confidence in myself. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't feel I deserved any better. Okay, and a lot of that comes from childhood, but we've all been through it. Um, so, and that I finally say, no, that I can't do that. And I see someone else who looks better. And I look and for the first month or two, they're like the perfect person in the world. They're the best person you could ever go out with. But then six months later, all of a sudden, back to the old loop, same loop, different face. They're a narcissist, they're abusive, and usually gets worse and worse and worse until you get slapped in the face by, by karma and the universe saying, hey, you know what? There's a lesson to be learned here. If you don't learn it, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. So then you make the choice, I've had enough. This is enough. Stop. I deserve better. And you demand better. And you, you literally, you know, say, I'm worth more. I deserve more. I demand that I have a better life with this. And when you truly believe that, things will change really fast for you. And you will manifest better things into your life, a new person that's not going to be that. But they're going to test you. They're going to test you. You need to learn how to say, no, no, I don't deserve that. I want this. And again, your, your inner self always knows. It always knows. It's that little twinge that you tend to ignore because you see something great in them. But... Um, it's the potential. You can't fall in love with potential. Um, it doesn't work. You can't change people. You know, they have to want to change themselves. So watch out for that. That's a big trap, especially for light workers and empaths. Empaths, they always want to fix everybody in the world. And, um, and it usually smacks them in the face when they try to do it. And so, um, you know, you can help people, but don't get sucked into the drama. Don't exactly. get sucked into the lesson. And be careful with trapped emotions. Um, those are one of the emotions that gets trapped in your, at your cellular core. And that, that actually motivates your subconscious, who does actually 95% of the driving. And consciously, you only drive 5% of the time. It actually sabotages you. Uh, sabotages you, you. You think of the most negative things that can happen and you transfer it onto the next person or the next possible job, or uh, I can't do this. Normally a conversation with yourself is, why do I have to do this or I can't do this? Um, best quick exercise is to speak with your subconscious, ask your subconscious, and the first answer that you get is normally your subconscious. It's either yes or no. Uh, the subconscious lives in, in strides of yes or no. It could be three, six, nine. Um, if you can, if you do therapy with other clients, a great uh, book to go by is the E-Code or the Emotion, right? Mm -hmm. the emotion, emotion Code. code. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll give you different instances. It'll give you great techniques for all you light workers. Mm -hmm. I live and die by that book, and so does Patty, a few of our friends as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very easy-peasy book, very mm -hmm. user-friendly and it'll actually, it's, it's changed my life around. Um, I'm an open vessel to all the possible things, and so is Patty. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to convey and push 
toward right. push that love toward everybody. And we try to integrate all these different things that we've learned into um, our our readings and our healings. Uh, Veronica is also a certified crisis counselor, so we do a lot of um, things with people that are having issues from their past childhood. Uh, things that they just can't seem to get through and get over. And uh, a lot of our, uh, a lot of our clientele are um, empaths and other healers and other psychics, because one of the things um, that seems to be really lacking, unfortunately, with um, our group of, of beings is that, um, that uh, we so take, take so much time trying to help others, we forget to help ourselves. Um, yeah. what's the next one? So what can we do to help our planet and ourselves? Um, the best thing that we can do is, is help others, help others, um, get through all the things that are going on. Try to keep the, the fear levels down, uh, because fear feeds the negativity. It feeds, it feeds the, you know, the bad things that are going around underneath and trying to, uh, keep us held down. Um, there's actually um, a lot of uh, a large group that wants to turn us basically into transhumans, uh, part computer, part human, um, and that's what a lot of the um, the modified foods and the vaccines and and um, different things that'll be I injected into us and things like that. Uh, we are currently fighting that battle, and I think on some levels we will win in different countries, but some some countries you know, may not. And it's very unfortunate. Yeah, and um, all of us as light workers, we do go through our uh, uh, cycles of uh, absorbing too much negativity, thinking we've pushed out or purged out the very last of it, and it stays with us. It starts interrupting with our joints, our meridian points. Mm -hmm. It's very important that as we grow and ascend, we need to become lighter and lighter. Um, every night before you go to bed, which is when your body rests, corporeal rest is, is that most important, uh, make sure that your mind is on the same level as your body resting. Um, do a little mantra. Do as, uh, it sounds narcissistic, but I love me. Everything will get better. I will make it better. I will walk the walk. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, always wake up in a state of grace. And before you go to bed, you leave with, I'm also in a state of grace as well. Always keep your mind in a consistent vibration. And, and again, attention to all you light workers. In fact, if you're listening right now to this, this wonderful fair we're so blessed to be in, um, you're a light worker. You're a light worker on some level. You've been, you've been woke up to, you know, to help others you know, uh, ascend and also yourself. And uh, what we've been hearing is, uh, and we've known through even our own selves, that a lot of the things that uh, light workers are going through right now is, is, um, Rita, is pain and things like that. Start to close. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So it looks like we're getting close to uh, the end of the time. What was the, what was the last question? That was it. That was yeah, it. Yeah, we, we that was all it. Okay, so Sherry, um, I don't know if you want to let some other questions in. We could answer some questions really quickly, or or no, no, did we no, talk too much? No, we just won't have a break in between. The next speaker comes on at six thirty, so you got okay. until six thirty. Okay. 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 Appreciate right. it. So yeah, let them in. Anybody? 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 Going any once? Going twice? <laughs> you have to be unmuted. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. What happened? Hello, hello. What happened? Hello. No, everybody oh, got okay. muted. Okay. Um, uh, Vicky, where are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Oh, please help. Um, why don't you unmute everybody for a moment and see if we have some questions? I think it's easier than that than raising hands since we don't have a lot of time. Just unmute. <laughs> Okay, so we did get one question on the uh, the chat from Lacey. From Lacey, and it's uh, how do you know that you are a star seed? Yeah. Okay, so um, there's many things that could uh, let you know that you're a star seed. Um, a lot of a lot of people 
they may um, start as um, as young as you know two three years old, and they may you know see you know relatives on the ceiling and things like that. They may recognize past lives, uh, which is which is also a thing we can do because we not only do past lives but we do past lives in your extraterrestrial form. So we can tell you who you've been as an extraterrestrial because we're not from here. And um, as hard as that might be for people to understand, um, the majority are not. Some have um, come straight from other, um, volunteered to come from other uh, different extraterrestrial races and that's where to come down and help and come in as a human form. And that's where the connection, you feel a connection to a certain part of, mm -hmm. of a map up there. Mm -hmm. And you can identify the smells, um, what your people looked like, what your family mm -hmm. members looked like. Yeah. Another clue is uh, you're, you're a little uh, you know, young, young child and you're saying, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Oh. Um, most kids do not ask that question. Um, another thing is you, uh, you start feeling like you, you can do more than what you can do. You, you can read people. You, um, your natural empaths, the people will come to you. Also, you'll have gifts that other people may not have. And um, uh, one that just screams and yells at you is generally when you're a child, um, if you've started early, is you're not like other kids. You're a little different. And you're gonna feel that difference because other kids don't see the things you see. Other kids don't feel or notice or as intuitive um, generally, star seeds um, are a little more intelligent. They tend to have a little higher IQs. Um, they tend to be highly creative, um, very artistic. Um, but but it also, um, depending on how your child would, was, because a lot of times parents will, you know, squash you down and say, "You don't see that. That's not grandma. You're making things up." Um, I have a friend who uh, is a um, a psych nurse. And uh, she unfortunately works in uh, with children, and you know these families sometimes put their kids in psych wards because they're seeing other people, other dimensions, things like that, and they don't understand. So it's still a little difficult for kids. Um, but as far as they also could be woke up um, as they get a little older and experience the same kind of things. Right now, a lot of uh, star seeds um, are feeling like they have a purpose, but they don't know what it is. They feel like they need to do something but they don't know what to do. Um, a lot of them are going through stomach issues, um, um, dizziness, just strange symptoms. And that's all our changes in the DNA, which you're doing. You'll have weird dreams. You'll start getting prophetic dreaming, things like that. That is so happening. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Even when I was a kid, like um, I would hallucinate things when I had yep. fevers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, this one time, it was like I was in a black hole going through like a tunnel and like seeing all the galaxies and everything. And it was insane. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was a kid and yeah, crazy. You're, you <laughs> weren't hallucinating. And that's the thing. You were so open that you were just traveling because kids, kids don't know that, oh, you're not supposed to see ghosts. You're not supposed to, you know, um, there's been um, kids that are feral that have been lost in the jungles and they can walk across fire and never get burnt because they don't know that they, you know, don't get burnt. It's kind of like the matrix. There is no spoon. Um, we know people that can just bend spoon like it's water. Um, they actually have um, a group of people that are, are psychics, very, very good psychics. And they actually uh, pray over certain metals that can't be melted. And they can literally change the frequency of the metal to melt it into little parts that they can't make any other way. There's so many things out there that, that they have not let others know because they don't want us to know who we truly are because we are not these meat bodies that are running around getting sick and, you know, waking up and, and thinking, oh, I got to go to work and that's my life and I got to have kids and that's my life and I'm going to die. There's so much more to, to it than that. You know, we are spiritual beings that, you know, can create yes. miracles. Yeah, because like lately, it's just like I've been searching for so many answers, going to every little thing and trying to find different things. And I've been researching constantly and I can never figure out why am I looking for all these answers constantly. It's, it's basically built into your DNA. 
um, like I said, I mean, the, the they are actually coming in. Now, extraterrestrials, you may not realize it, or you may realize it, um, because we've been specifically sent down here to help the world ascend. So um, you're going to have that drive to research and find out what is my purpose, where yeah, am I supposed to go? Basically, you're, you're homesick, but another level. Yes. Yeah, and, and another big thing is a lot of people... It, it is going to sound weird, but a lot of people um, feel very uncomfortable around other people and they want to be alone a lot because they can't understand why humans do what they do. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Did you mute? Did we, no. we need to wrap it up, ladies. We got another speaker coming, but um, uh, Joe uh, jo Johnson said her nine-year-old daughter asked a question, why am I here? She also told me out of the blue that she and I were sisters once and I died young. She's trying to assimilate now how to be like her friends. They won't admit that she asked these questions and knew about past lives. What can I do to encourage her and not feel different? Okay. Uh, so quickly answer that because we want to get to the next speaker so we can stay on. And then Joe, why don't you go visit them privately in the room afterwards and anybody else? The ladies are here for two and a half more hours. Okay. And they're also available for private sessions and their website is... Angelmystic.com. There we go. So we'll quickly answer Joe's question and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, the best thing I could um, say for you to do is to encourage her and, and tell her, I mean, unfortunately she needs to kind of keep quiet around her friends because they're not going to understand. And, but also, but encourage her at home to start learning these things, get her, get her little tarot cards. Um, you can, um, you know, ask her questions just with a deck of cards, start her, you know, ask her questions about what she sees, what she does, and encourage, um, encourage that, that um, part of her because otherwise she'll lose it. So if you don't use it, you lose it. And, and it's going to get better. It's going to open up, you know, sooner than you think, as far as people are going to start understanding um, what we're here for and what we're supposed to do. She's definitely a starseed and she's definitely needs to be here. And again, if you need any more information, <clears throat> or anything, um, you know, that we can do to help, you know, just come see us in our chat room. Um, we could give you a reading, we give her a reading um, of who she was in the past. Also, um, don't let her near a Ouija board. Not good. <laughs> okay, thank you, ladies. So um, a lot of people are asking how they can have a session with you. You got a lot of interested people. Um, we, we highly suggest that you go back to the event page and book the ticket, that way we can track it. However, I will take Zelle, Cash App, and Venmo under my phone number, 786-419-1389. And if there is a memo, just put their, their name in it so I know to pay them. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank okay. you, Sherry. Yes, thank you, Sherry.